Hi Sagittarius, thank you for joining me and welcome to my channel. This is your reading for the North Node in Gemini and South Node in uh, Sagittarius. So it's a big one for you guys. Uh, the last of a series of very complicated transits that went through Sag. The first one being the Saturn transit in Sagittarius a few years ago. Then Lilith joined Saturn, then Jupiter, and now the south node so you're really going through quite a bit of changes a lot of intensity and uh, this is, transit will really clean things up we're calling it for you guys the Hoover transit so it's going to its main focus is going to be for you in getting rid of what the other transits left behind be it circumstances relationships and so forth so you are going to have an opportunity to in some way uh, kind of start from square one at the end of this transit and uh, yeah so let me get explain the transits for you for your sign I did a dedicated reading for you guys um, on this main channel about what the north node is about the what the south node is and now I want to dedicate a video for sun moon and rising Sag okay so if you're a sun moon or a rising Sag um, the south node has just entered into your sign this is gonna be a big Hoover energy it's gonna clean up what the other signs left behind your north node has now moved into the seventh house which is the house of partnerships so you are going to focus on your relationships with others you are going to be focused on partnership whether you're in a relationship or not that's going to be something that's at the forefront of your mind there is going to be a lot of confrontational energy coming through like stuff you have to address you're not going to necessarily let things slide over the next year and a half I think that you'll let your opinions be known and I don't think you're going to be shy to share them and that's not necessarily such a bad thing I think Think that you have strong energy to uh, address things you have strong uh, consequences from the last couple years in your life and now is a good time to do that so what I want to do first is go through the three different charts that describe three of the biggest patterns over the next year and a half the first one is here which is your May 2020 right now the pattern that is going on in the sign of Gemini that's in your seventh house so that is to do with partnership the thing about this north node transit is that it's by itself in Gemini so for the most part it's going to look like this in your chart there's going to be nothing next to it which makes it kind of a weak transit we feel like we want to get somewhere it's hard to get to where we want to be uh, you have an idea of what you want or maybe you'll even have a difficult time figuring it out figuring out what you do want and especially for you you will be very preoccupied with kind of closing out things uh, finding closure for things that were kind of I don't know initiated when uh, the south node was having those transit of Saturn Jupiter and Lilith over here over the last few years so I'll get to that in a moment but this north node transit is unsupported and so it just has a weaker effect except for two times in the next two years or year and a half and that will be when the inner planets Vesta, Venus, and Mercury are in Gemini and, and the inner planets including the Sun. And this year that's going to be May through August and next year that is going to be May and June. So during those parts of the year you will feel more obliged or motivated to get there to get to where you're going things are going to pop off for you in the realm of relationships things are going to move quite fast on the opposite end of things you see the south node here it's by itself but it's like a hoover vacuum like after a party cleaning up everything that the other planets left behind and what it's cleaning up is like um, maybe new things you've learned about yourself new things that you've learned about your personality maybe someone's pointed out aspects of who you are and you need to figure out who you are with all this new information from the the way people have talked to you or from the experiences you recently have had so it's a very introspective 
transit it's it's actually really freeing because you're gonna feel with this transit as if kind of like uh, personality characteristics that are weighing on your heart that are that you have to live with or that you have to deal with are going to be um, kind of addressed you're gonna in one way or another figure them out you're gonna one way in another or another you know kind of make peace with yourself so that's nice so in other words from May until August this year is probably going to be the most busy time of this transit for you that's when relationships can happen that's when important things can happen within your relationships that's when you get closer with other people or you just just figure out that people are not your cup of tea and you go your own direction but it's all about making choices about partnerships either coming together or growing apart the next transit is more difficult I'm telling everyone this because uh, I hear a lot of people talking about the end of the year being this amazing transit and, and and maybe something great will happen and I'm not sure if that's the case I'm not sure if that's such a you know uh, true uh, prophecy or a reading of a chart um, what's going on is that Mars goes retrograde in your fifth house there may be some I don't know going back to things that you really like to do things you don't get to do and working through why you can't do them so things that are your interests or allowing yourself permission to do things that you usually don't let yourself do also uh, past relationships working out especially conflict in past situations finding closure in those relationships and moving on that's going to happen in September and in some way you're going to get an opportunity to like rethink what you're doing and rethink what's important to you and when you do then Lilith will move into the sixth house with Uranus and it's going to feel as though you you don't really know what to do from day to day you don't really know how to get around certain things and Lilith is going to make things hard on you she can manifest as a person, she can manifest as a general temperament of your work around you, like, uh, but there will be obstacles, there will be unfortunate obstacles, like things that shouldn't be there, uh, there will be like just waste of time kind of energy, where you're scratching your head and just wondering what's going on or why it's there. That transit with Uranus, that's really hard to solve in your environment, is going to be creating a semi-square to the north node in your seventh house. That's going to make your partnerships challenging in October, November, and December. So I would say do all your partnership stuff before then. Make sure that you're good with your boo. And if you don't have a boo, then just chill out for the winter time um, in business. Make sure that your stuff is legit with your business partners, that everything's figured out. If there's, uh, if you need to look for work, be cautious through this transit. Um, there may be some frustrating things about business partners or relationship partners wanting to do things that you don't necessarily want to do, or maybe that there's ob they're holding, they're creating obstacles for you in terms of where what you want to do. So be very, very patient with this energy. And within this transit, another dynamic is playing out at the end of this year, and that's the stelium here in Capricorn. That for you is in the second house of money. Now, this is a transit that has to do with last year, December, January, February, and possibly March. That's when the south node was in Capricorn in the second house. We had eclipses there over starting in December. There's a lot of stuff in world politics that happened in that time. You know, we're all aware of what happened. It was pretty extreme. For you, this is happening in your second house of money. And so I feel like whatever pattern started in that space and time January February March you're going to be closing out that energy at the end of the year so either a similar situation will come up or possibly a situation will come up that is like um, a closing out en energy a situation that allows you to find closure for the things that had started at the beginning of the year and so you want to be very available 
to let go of things and work things out and go in your direction and free yourself up and just move past whatever it is that you have to deal with. It has to do with your money, so I would say take it seriously. The last transit I want to talk to you guys about and then we'll move on to the tarot is next year in 2021. That is when the, let's see, where are we? Uh, that's when Lilith enters into your seventh house. That's the open enemy. Very, very in-your-face conflict with maybe one person or maybe it's a situation. But when Lilith is in our seventh house, there is direct, there is direct confrontation. There is direct, like, I don't like you. This is the writing on the wall. You know, unapologetic, like you know your enemy there's no there's no beating around the bush there's no secret about that and the fact that it's with the north node it may in some way get in the way of your partnerships or it may get in the way of your love however it's not going to be bad she moves in on february uh, february july 25th and she'll stay till the beginning of august but then right after a series a very benefic um minor planet moves into Gemini and Ceres has a retrograde period so she will protect your reputation she will have your back if you're in an outright conflict with someone through this time Ceres will be there with you through it she'll she'll cover your butt and uh, the nice thing about it is that Lilith will pass the north node in that early August, mid-August time frame, and Ceres will actually be in the seventh house the entire time until the north node enters into Taurus, so, you know, you're off the hook big time with that, and catastrophe avoided, especially in the realm of reputation or like an outright, like, hostile situation between yourself and someone else. So first, let's take a look at the tarot. First, we're taking a look at the south node, which has to do with releasing karma, integrating our self-understanding in the first house. So for you, you have the south node in the first house. If you're wondering what's going on here, this is a chart for July 2021, and this is an asteroid called Juno, and she is the ideal partner. So you're going to have actually have a lot of radiance at that period of time, so from early July for like a while after you are going to get a lot of attention from other people because you are going to portray this very beautiful attractive like a mother like energy so there will be a lot of people that are drawn to you a lot of people will turn to you and and in some way you are going to have this Juno is the moral law, so it doesn't have to do with legal law, it has to do with like moral authority, so a lot of people will be turning to you for your opinion, for your judgment. So that's the south node. Let's see what we're hoovering up. Like what kind of stuff is, are we getting out of there as new things are beginning? Your first card is the five of wisdom. This is the Hierophant card. This is the card of Taurus. So in essence, you've been exposed to a variety of experiences. You've been exposed to a variety of different opinions and you've learned a lot. I feel like you've gained a lot of knowledge in this frame. It really feels like you've gone on a extended period in which you've learned a lot about life. The next message is the Ace of Swords. So. I have a feeling that you're coming to terms or to conclusions about certain things. You've had life experiences and now you're defining them. Now you're figuring out exactly who you are. You're, you're figuring things out. You're drawing conclusions from the experiences you've had and then you're kind of speaking to them. You're like, this is what life is about with this new information. I have a feeling that somebody is reaching out to you. For some of you, this is regarding education, really considering education at this time. If you're not in school, then maybe you're thinking of going. Or maybe a school is reaching out to you, which is even better depending on what you study. The next message is the solar plexus. And so with this energy, I feel as though um, you be, you get to begin everything that you have set up for yourself. I have a feeling that in the last 
year transit in the last year, two years, three years, you had an idea of where you wanted to go, but there was still things in your way holding you back from actually getting to where you're going. So now that all the circumstances that are like weighing on you that distract you from where you want to go, those circumstances are going to be removed and you're going to get to go where you want to go. Then we have the Ace of Wands. So for some of you guys, this is a change of home. Uh, it's a little bit early. I would say uh, the change of home very likely will happen in two years time, like a big change. Uh, but this is saying change of home, possibly. That can also be uh, a different opinion or coming to a conclusion that a different place is your home than you originally thought like you know like maybe moving from like thinking of your parents house as your home to the home that you share at school or with your partner maybe there's like a shift of where you situate yourself where is your foundation here is oh you have another ace so success this is going to be a very successful year and a half for you because everything that you've gained in the last three, four years from the challenges and from the blessings, once it's like cleaning your house. You can really finally enjoy your house once it's clean and once it's ready. This Hoover vacuum that is the south node is sort of cleaning out your first house. You're getting rid of all the stuff that was the consequence of the last few years events and you know conclusions and and knowledge and and you're going forward in a new direction here is the next message we have the temptation a real desire to go back to some things that you know aren't good for you but some of you are dealing with addiction addiction is not uh, sign based it's not to do with your zodiac sign but if it's almost like a different degrees of addiction some of you have like heart addictions which are very hard to break and so again temptation but many of you have other types of addictions that are very I would say subtle and uh, subversive so not so in your face and those things that you're leaving behind there will continually be this kind of like oh I could go back to this way of thinking I could go back to doing this or I could go back to doing that but it's gonna be your choice to either you've essentially cleared yourself of wanting to go there with things so it's essentially your choice about whether or not you're gonna go back to that and if you go back to that then all your progress will have been lost but if you stand your ground then I think you're in for quite a bit of success and fulfillment so there's gonna be a lot of patience over the next year and a half having to wait for things you know having to to wait for things to come and fall into line and then there's going to be the root chakra that's almost like four aces it's not quite it so definitely getting ready to like how do you say it's almost like moving to a different continent moving to a completely different scene and um, setting your roots down in a different direction and I don't mean like oh you know I went to live there for a year and I had that experience no this is like setting roots down in a new place uh, setting things up it might be university it might be not university but I think that you're really resettling in a big pattern and it could be as long as uh, about a three year pattern of resettling and moving. The reason for this is Saturn's in Aquarius and when Saturn moves into Pisces, from that point on your chances of making a significant li life move for the next two and a half years will be quite high. So if it's not before then, then it will be after that right after so this could be a precursor to you making a pretty massive life change and it looks like it's going to be very very successful let's see the next message so this is for the north node partnership issues nine of swords the darkest fears you know what this tells me is that maybe you've had some relationships that didn't pan out uh, like you had relationships that were uh, disturbing I would say like that have disturbed you that doesn't mean that something extreme happened I hope not but for some of you 
there may have been very difficult relationships, partnerships that you were a part of. And I think that there's a hesitancy for you to move into another relationship. Or if it's within a relationship, you sort of got distant from your partner because of some difficult circumstances. And so you hesitate. You hesitate to really open up in this direction. And I believe that, you know, during the July, August 2021 transit, it's really valid. This is like salt on wounds, you know, so you might feel like, your fear might be exploited during that time by Lilith. So if you're afraid that your partner's going to cheat on you, she might make it seem like they are, even though they're not. So go really slow with that July through August 2021 transit. Let's see what's going on besides that. We have the Four of Cups. You feel like you're not getting enough. Um, you feel like you're not getting up enough out of situations, which makes you want to challenge the world around you and demand more. Um, I think that you're going to, in some way, make some key decisions about, you know, if someone isn't going to be on par with you, if somebody's not going to play like an equal footing game and reciprocate, I think you're going to be very quick to let them go because I think you're going to be a little bit, maybe not rattled, but I think you're going to be a really cautious in the realm of partnerships, in the realm of love. I think that you know that you're sensitive through this time. You already feel it. And I feel like you're not going to be open just to anyone. So anybody wanting to be around you or with you will have to really wait things out as you figure things out as you decide which direction you really feel passion for and give yourself that time then we have the throat chakra okay so i have a feeling that you in some way are trying to find like um, the genuine definition of who you are with this transit so you're releasing like old ideas, old notions about who you are, what kind of person you are, what your style is, you know, what kind of hair color looks good on you, all of that kind of stuff. And then, and then you are thinking about externalizing that in a partner. So you're thinking about like, who am I becoming? Who am, who am I not anymore? What kind of things have I outgrown about myself and then you're thinking a lot about what what kind of person complements that and your partner would be the main person to do so so this throat chakra is about that definition like defining who you are and then trying to find that in the appropriate person but there's going to be a lot of feelings like you're not giving me what I need I need to move on or I need I can get more out of this than that that kind of thing and then we have the heart chakra. So it is very sensitive. I'm not saying you're being, I don't know, just cold or dismissive. No, I don't, I don't feel that. I feel like you're very, sen it's coming from a sensitivity. It's coming from, I don't want to get hurt and I don't want to be drawn in this situation in a more complicated way. So I'm just going to sit, wait and sit and figure things out. You know, before before I make my decision, I'm going to really be protective over my heart. I'm going to be protective over my decisions and ideas. Here is the next message, the seat card, the hermit card. I think that somebody's going to make you an offer thinking that it's a good offer. And I think you're going to be like, that's not good enough for me. It's like somebody offers you a one night stand and you'll be like, Really? And then that's going to put the relationship, you know, end the relationship. But I think that it's a part of a bigger pattern. And I'm not saying that like a relationship will end. For maybe some of you, if you're in that kind of, um, you know, one night stand sort of situation, maybe. But I feel like, I think that somebody is going to think that you're going to go for less than what you're willing to go for. And I think that you're going to in that decide to kind of detach, do your own thing, figure out who you are and find someone who complements that. So rather than internalizing, you know, putting yourself in situations that are just not giving to you what you need, you are essentially challenging the world and saying, hey world, I want more out of 
life here than that. And then we have the observed card. These are the same card, which is the hanged man. And so I feel like you, at the end of this year, at the end of this transit, year and a half, you are going to be very focused on finding the right partner, but you're going to be very demanding about who you find and if it's not the right person you're going to be very much of the line, mindset of letting them go and so at the end of the year you're going to be very clear on that you're going to be very very clear on the fact you don't want to waste your time with just anyone okay so now let's take a look at what personality traits are coming out in the next year for you so let's see your first personality trait you look at you the rule maker like you're yeah I think that you're basically being a boss essentially like you're saying like I've done all this work with my south node um, now I have to sort of uh, clean the, all that up but I learned a lot from that and through all that learning I've elevated and now I have new things to be interested about then it's the procrastinator okay someone someone isn't leading their life around you fast enough so they offer the world around them mediocre things because they essentially are not committing to their own life so that's the answer for that love life question and then we have the responsible card so yeah you're just gonna be like okay well I'm not gonna waste my time in this situation so I feel like I feel like you're going to get tested by someone. You're going to get tested by someone or maybe more than one person about giving you less than you deserve. Lilith is in your uh, seventh house for the 2021, rest of 2021 transit. I think she'll be there for uh, until, in, until probably like May of 2022. So it's kind of a, a pretty long transit but she won't be with the North Node for long, so she'll be up here for the majority of the transit, so you don't have to worry. But what's going to happen with the Lilith transit there is that you might face some energies of like people just not being very good partners or you know trying to get into a partnership with you for the wrong reasons that kind of stuff but it has a lot to do with their procrastination in their own life here is the next message we have the enthusiast and I think you're gonna get enthusiastic about something I think you're gonna find something that you're gonna zero in on and part of the reason maybe why the people are in your life the way they are is that you're not living authentically with regard to who you are so as feedback my 2020 hindsight kind of summary for you is maybe at the beginning of the year get really clear about your top five things that matter and do those without thinking about relationships as being priority but if the relationships show up then welcome them in but also be focused on who you are and what you want and don't get distracted by other people's kind of there other people's not knowing where they're at with things just because you're you're organized doesn't mean they'll be organized but if you get organized then you can take care of you and at least you won't resent things at least you won't regret okay I did that north node in Gemini breakdown to explain the transit and I'll link it at the end of the video here and then I also did a playlist with all of the new videos I update that weekly bi-weekly so go check it out it's all the new videos across all my channels on one playlist okay so go check it out I'll see you soon Saj have a good year year and a half I'll talk to you soon take care bye